Super Bowl is finally here. Well, almost. We elected to do our Super Bowl special here on Bet On It a little bit early so you guys can get ahead and get the best of the numbers, whether that be the side, total, prop bets, etc. We can also talk about some sharp action. We're going to hang out with Joe Ranieri. Teddy Covers filling in for Marco D'Angelo on this beautiful Friday afternoon. Of course, Ralph Michaels is bringing all the nerd charts and some TNA. And we're going to hit some of those best bets at the end. But first, we're going to talk to Andy Lang to see if he likes some of my prop bets that I have dug up for the big game. Let's get right into it, guys. Wager Talk odd screen open. Pretty much two across the board as far as, as, far as the side goes. Uh, money lines kind of a little bit all over the place. Minus 130 pretty much in Vegas. DraftKings plus 120 on the Chiefs. We'll see how that one pans out over the next week or so. Teddy Covers, welcome in. Appreciate you. Long time no see at Teddy underscore covers on X. If you guys want to give him a follow, tons of great content every day on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Unfortunately, he has to hang out with Prez, but Wager Talk today, great programming from his standpoint. Teddy, welcome in. Yeah, what are you going to do? You know, Prez is the coach. Yeah. You get Joe to hang out with every week. And Ralph, I, I get to hang, hang out with Prez every day. So, uh, Dirty job. Someone's got to do the first it. Round pick. Not, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. If we were drafting, you would not have been the first choice. That being said, it is. No. I'll, I'll give credit to Prez because so many of these shows are dry. You know, dry, just dry. And Prez is not a dry guy. It's an entertaining show. And when you can mix some sports betting, and keep it light and entertaining, I, I think people are into it. So uh, I love doing it every day, uh, each and every weekday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon back east, live on Wager Talk TV. Yeah, it is an uh, absolute riot. I've tuned in a couple times and been like, okay, where is the FCC like dump button? We need a dump button for this show. Uh, but it's always very humorous, and uh, somehow you have not killed him yet after, what, four years of doing the show daily? So I'm very proud of you, Teddy. But let's get into the Super Bowl in your backyard there in Las Vegas. I know you cannot wait to shell out nine grand to go to the game. But you have an interesting <laughs> thought here on, uh, well, the side as well as the total, which we'll get into later. And I didn't really think about this one um, in terms of that because I've always been told not to do this. Yeah, and really, frankly, it's it's anti-wise guy, uh, what I'm doing here. We talk about teasing tide and total in the Super Bowl. I get it. That being said, one of the two to me was very obvious, all right? Uh, we'll talk about total in a minute. Right here, I'm going to talk about the side. And I'm teasing Kansas City through the key numbers. We all know what we want to do with teaser strategy. Get across the key numbers of three, four, six, and seven. You can tease on a six-point teaser at Kansas City from plus two up to plus eight. And I'm not going to overthink this. You know, one of one of my biggest weaknesses as a handicapper is I overthink things. This is not an overthink situation. All right. I don't expect the defending Super Bowl champs to get pushed around. All right. It has a much like last year's game. This is, feels like another one possession affair. We know Patrick Mahomes track record is an underdog. 10-1-1 one, one against the spread in 12 previous tries in his career. And the lone loss for Patrick Mahomes as an underdog, it's worth noting, they were plus two and a half slash plus three. They lost the game by four. All right. So it's not like they lose contact very often with Patrick Mahomes behind center. KC lost six games this season. Exactly one of those six losses came by more than eight points. And you remember that game, Kelly. It was a, that weird game at Denver uh, back in October. That's the only time all year they lost by more than eight points. Chiefs have made the playoffs nine times the last 10 years under Andy Reid. They won two Super Bowls, which means they've suffered seven playoff defeats. Exactly one of those seven playoff defeats came by more than a touchdown. We're talking about an elite defense, a defense that allowed more than 21 only three times all year, never more than 27 in any game. From a defensive perspective, San Fran might have the great full season numbers. They didn't play their West down the stretch. Obviously, the two playoff games against Detroit and Green Bay, that defense got pushed around. So we have a Chiefs team that doesn't lose contact. They don't fail by margin very often. Teasing the defending champs through those key numbers in my mind, is a positive expectation strategy in a game they're live to win. Kelly? Yeah, Teddy, I, I don't hate that at all, as a matter of fact, because I am still so conflicted in this game. Joe Ranieri, the Niners defense, as Teddy Cover said, yeah, they got a first-round bye, but against the Packers, abysmal. Just, I, they didn't deserve to win that game, and uh, Niners fans can get mad at me all they want. I know because I bet the Niners in that game and uh, was just really disappointing. Brock, pretty great fourth quarter by him. On the flip side, 
uh, you and I both were cheering for the Ravens uh, for my Super Bowl ticket last Sunday. And lo and behold, you are supposed to run the ball against the Kansas City defense because that's their one Achilles heel and nobody ran the ball against them. If the Niners game plan isn't to run the ball, I want no part of the Niners. I also know mm. that the Chiefs are going to be one of the more public dogs we've seen in the Super Bowl since. Well, they played Tom Brady and the Bucks. Help me decide here. Uh, maybe it is just best for me to stay away and, and bet some prop bets how I see this game correlated. I, I listen, I'm with you. I think this is it's a coin flip for a reason. It wouldn't shock me if this thing gets inching closer and closer to a pick them by the time we get to uh, by the time we get to the kickoff. And we've talked about it on the show, Cal, a couple of uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, we talked about it on, you know, X. Uh, I don't know how to quantify experience. I don't know how to quantify having been there and done that. Uh, but it was quite obvious uh, just last week watching Baltimore and Kansas City. There was one team that looked like they had been there and done that before, and there was another team that looked like a deer caught in the headlights. I don't know wh how much that's worth. I don't know how we put that into numbers, but there was no doubt to me that this Kansas City Chiefs team has that it factor, which makes it very difficult to pull the trigger one way uh, or the other. But I will say this, because I think it's fascinating what you said about the 49ers defensive front. That defensive front uh, has not been doing a good job, especially over the last couple of games, right? The defensive line, they haven't played anywhere near what the talent level is on that defensive front. If they don't control the line of scrimmage, which, by the way, at, at many points in that Green Bay and Detroit game, they didn't, uh, then they're going to be in for a long day because even when they got Jared Goff off his mark one way or the other, if you do that to Mahomes, he's even more dangerous than anything Goff was capable of doing. So I don't, they're not a big blitzing team. That front of the 49ers, uh, without leaving themselves exposed in the secondary, they've got to own that line of scrimmage. If you think they can, uh, then I think, uh, yes, the, the Chiefs could be in for a little bit of a long afternoon. But ultimately, with the Chiefs, they made that switch in December. In fact, I think it was Christmas, uh, that last loss that they had there where Andy Reid took a step back and he's like, all right, we, we are not the Chiefs of all. Tyreek Hill ain't walking through that door. I mean, there's only so many passes we can watch being dropped here. They went to a much more balanced approach from that point on. Pacheco became a huge part. Uh, the running game became a huge part. And basically, they said the three best guys on this offense, Pacheco, Kelsey, and Mahomes, that's who we're going to rely upon here. They're not going to be one-dimensional. They're not going to throw it 40 times a game. And it's worked. Uh, so they've become a little different version of the Chiefs team that we have seen. Uh, having said that, I just think, Put it together. There is more talent on this 49ers team. And if that talent comes together here for the best game of the season, I still think they're capable of beating the Kansas City Chiefs, even with that experience, even with that coach, even with that quarterback. Uh, to me, it would be 49ers or pass from a side. But uh, like you said, it's I don't love either way here. It's a truly tough game to pick from a side perspective. All right, well, then let's get into the total perspective here. 47 pretty much across the board. If you guys didn't know, I do a weekly podcast with John Murray, the executive director over at the Westgate, and he told me, hey, a respected better immediately bet over 47 and a half. Went up a little bit, right back down. It is across the board on the Wager Talk odd screen. Joe Ranieri, in, in true Joe Ranieri fashion, you're going to do something I am just completely shocked by. Tell me why you like the first half over. Well, I, I fully intend to have the bourbon uh, filled uh, in the first half, so I do not have to watch the second half of this game, simply because I don't want to get aggravated uh, and have a bet worrying about the second game. But listen, there is absolutely no, uh, and I agree, I, I could see this, uh, although I do think this is going to, I don't see this thing hitting 48 and a half, 49. I, I think what you see is what you're going to get here ultimately with this number uh and i think it'll fluctuate you know a half a point one way or another from now to kickoff 
Um, the whole thing that would stop me about a full game over is what we have seen from these two teams here in the playoffs so far. I mean, we watched the Lions have 280 yards in first half offense against this 49ers defense, and then they had 165, 66 yards in the second half. And most of that, by the way, came on that final, you know, uh, empty netter uh, possession that they had there with the prevent defense of the 49ers. We also, it's well documented, we talked about it last week in the Ravens game. I did the same thing with Kansas City. Give me the first half over, and then Spags and that Kansas City defense giving up an average of seven points in the second half, not just the last couple of weeks, all damn season. I did not trust uh, that there were going to be, uh, the offenses were going to be able to make enough adjustments to overtake the defenses. I don't see that happening in this game either. I do think Andy Reid and Shanahan scripting out those offenses, I can absolutely see them having success early and often in this game. Uh, the number I think is 23, 23 and a half. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it the same way. I think from a total perspective, the first half over is a good way to look at this game. Uh, I don't think the full game over, I can't pull the trigger on that now because if these two defenses make the adjustments like they have been, then the offenses are gonna struggle. We just saw the Ravens do it to Kansas City uh, also in that game there. Uh, you know, they didn't score a point in the second half. So both of these defenses are very capable of making the adjustments at the half, and I think they will again. So from a total perspective, I will pour that bourbon at halftime, enjoy the rest of the second half, but in the first half, I'm looking for points. I'll take the over 23, 23 and a half. I am in agreement with you, and I have been really anticipating Teddy's take on the total because I don't know where he's going to go here. He's going to tease the Chiefs <laughs> as the first leg, but I can't decide, Joe, I'm with you. What have we seen? Well, in one game, we saw fireworks in the second half. In the other game, we finally saw a defense be able to shut down the Kansas City Chiefs, albeit the Bills did in the fourth quarter as well. But I do find that rather interesting uh, because we all know, Teddy, and I'd love you to touch on it, certain key numbers here in regards to totals. Sure. And then key numbers and totals, uh, there's a lot more than there are for sides. You know, we talk three, four, six, and seven for sides. When you're talking totals, you got 42, 44, 45, 47, 48, 51. Um, so there's more key numbers and fewer games land on any of them compared to three or seven. So the keyest numbers are total. Yes, they're key, but they're not as key, perhaps, as we talk about key numbers in the NFL in terms of the number of games that actually land on or within a half a point uh, of that total. Worth noting, and you're absolutely right, Kelly, when it came to which leg of the which way it was going to go with the total leg of the teaser that was one i had to think about and really i mean i spent all week thinking about it i knew i was going to be on kansas city plus the eight but it didn't post for the clients uh, until today because i was really debating the total and the more i thought about it the more i thought the pace of play is what's the key factor for the total in this one look the chiefs have spent all season as the epitome of an under team they're the number one under team in the nfl 14 and 6 to the under in 20 games. The defense, I talked about earlier, it's been elite. They've allowed more than 21 points only three times all year and never more than 27 in any game. Their pace of play is unbelievably slow. Long, methodical drives, game after game. Think about what we've seen already here in the postseason. This is not the big play offense with Mahomes and Tyreek from last year. It's the opposite of that, and it has been all season. San Fran plays slow as well, really slow, bottom quartile in plays per game. And, yeah, the 49ers defense didn't play their best in, the, in their two playoff games against Detroit and Green Bay. We know that. But much like Kansas City, San Fran had a top quartile defense all year in yards per play allowed and obviously extra time to prep for this one. Last year was the only Super Bowl in the last five seasons to get above 51 points. You know, 14 of the last 19 have produced 52 or lower. You can tease this, even if you see touchdowns in these games. And above, let's not forget, both teams well above average at forcing field goals from red zone opportunities. But even if we see touchdowns, I think it's going to be a low possession, slow pace type of ball game, fewer drives, and that sets the stage for a relatively 
low scoring affair. So I teased Kansas City to plus eight, and I teased it with the under 53 and a half. Yeah, I think that's the way to go, Teddy. Looks like uh, Chiefs to the under. If I was to join you on that teaser, would be for me. All right, I'm going to kick these two out of here. I know Teddy's had his glasses on all show, but you know what these mean. It's time for some TNA with Ralph Michaels. I didn't expect to see Ralph Gorbachev on the other side of the screen. Ralph, I hope you're okay. That looks like that one might have hurt a little bit. Well, Kelly, I'll tell you what. If you go down to the Caribbean and you're on one of those boats and you decide to have a little battle, the boat versus your head, the boat usually wins. How many adult beverages over under six and a half? I am so embarrassed to say I was sober. It was 9 a.m. I wish it were a different reason, but that wasn't the reason. Oh, no. Yes. Alcohol is a much better excuse. You just to tell people you had such a great time after the booze cruise, you fell off the boat. I like that story much better uh, than the 9 a.m. version. All right, Ralph, we've got a nerd chart, of course, as well as tons of stuff to go over TNA wise for the Super Bowl. Just a reminder, the number one most downloaded sheet ever at Wager Talk is Ralph's Super Bowl Guide. So make sure you guys head over to his homepage, wt.buzz backslash rm. Super Bowl prop results in the last 14 years, Ralph. Let's break it down. You know, Kelly, I talk to so many people when we get to Super Bowl props, and they're like, well, this is pretty obvious. This regularly doesn't happen. This happens. and But people don't know the real results. They have in their mind what they think they're going to say. I'm going to jump back. And the most remarkable stat of this whole guide, Andy, uh, I talked to Andy earlier today, and I think he's going to bring up a team that he likes to score last in the Super Bowl. Kelly, did you know that teams, the team to score last in the Super Bowl has covered 14 straight years? You can bet, will the team that scores last win the game or lose the game? For 14 straight years, the team that has scored last has won the game. Some other ones that stick out in the sheet. Shortest TDs. People think one and a half. Oh, how many one-yard TDs are there? Well, because of pass interference in the end zone, because of getting auto, getting first downs down late, shortest TD under one and a half yards has hit four straight years, and the under is seven and one the last eight years. Longest TDs. The general number is 48 and a half, and I understand you use a lot of different sports books, so I had to put a generalization number in there when we're using the longest. Longest TD, I used 48 yards. It's gone under four of the last five, and it's gone under uh, nine of the last 12. And how about this? Fumbles. The normal number is fumbles one and a half, over or under. Under one and a half fumbles has hit six straight years. So it gives you over 30 props, what you can look at, what the results have been, uh, first play, run, pass, odd evens, anything you could think of. The 30 most popular props are here for the sheet. If you go to Wager Talk now, Kelly, you can get that sheet. If you go after uh, 6 p.m. Eastern on Friday, which most people will when they're seeing this, I will add a few sheets, including the last eight years, top rushers, top receivers, the quarterback stats, and a bunch of other things, including uh, the last 20 Super Bowls, just so you can see the progression and the quarter-by-quarter -quarter scoring. That's awesome, Ralph. Shortest. So, uh, touchdown under one and a half yards is a fan favorite of me and some of my friends will be on that one again this year. All right, let's break down some of this TNA for the big game. Well, you know, people look at seedings all the time and they think, oh, the number one seed means you're the better team and not necessarily how well you're currently playing. So a number one seed will likely have a better win percentage than their opponent. This year, San Francisco is the higher seed. And no, you're not going to base a bet on this. But it's very interesting to know. In the Super Bowl for the last 15 years, the team with the higher seed, excuse me, the team with the higher win percentage is 1 in 14 against the spread. That obviously San Fran has the higher win percentage. And then when I look, Kelly, if you are the number one seed like San Francisco is, and you're playing a non number one seed like they are this year, those teams are only two and nine straight up when, again, the number one seed is playing a seed lower than one. Couple more things to look at. Again, there's not much data in the Super Bowl because it depends on the teams, it depends on the situations. But 
teams like San Francisco that failed to win their last game, it's only happened six times since 2002. Those teams are two and five straight up and one and six against the spread. And only one team, Kelly, in the last 23 years has gone to the Super Bowl, failing to cover each of their last two games like San Francisco has done. That was the New England Patriots in the 2007 season. Guess what? They were a favorite in the Super Bowl. They lost outright. So we'll see if the 49ers can bring break that. How about favorites and dogs in the Super Bowl? It's been pretty 50-50, but when you look at Super Bowl favorites of two or more, those teams the last 18 seasons have gone 5 and 13, 27.8% against the spread. So the dogs obviously have done very well. The Chiefs, back-to-back -back road wins, going back to the Super Bowl since 2000. How many Super Bowl teams won back-to-back -back road games to get to the Super Bowl? Well, there's been seven. Guess what? Those teams like Kansas City, a perfect 7-0 and against the spread. And this one shocked me. When I looked at the Super Bowl winner for the first three quarters of the game, the average score after three quarters was 18.2 to 17.1, a 1.1 edge for the first three quarters. In the fourth quarter, the average score for the winner, 11.4 to 2.8. And how about this? In the last eight Super Bowls, the winner has gotten outscored 71 to 52 in the second quarter. So what I'm saying is this. If you think you have the better team and they get down in the second quarter or they're down at halftime, don't fret. That has been the history of Super Bowls. Again, I'll load the data up into the guide later today. There'll be some more information there. For example, one more thing I'm going to throw up there. How many Super Bowl winners trailed after three quarters? Well, if I look at the last 12 Super Bowls, only four teams have trailed in the first quarter that won the game. Patriots in 2001, Steelers in 2005, Colts in 2006, Saints in 2009. So no Super Bowl winner since 2009 has actually been down after one quarter. A lot of data to look at, not in the much, not a ton of helpfulness because each game is unique, but at least you will be completely informed when you make your final Super Bowl decisions. That's why Ralph's the best, the king of the database at Cal Sports LV over on X at Ralph Michaels WT on Instagram. I'm trying to keep your page alive, Ralph. I will make sure to post this chart over there. Just drop it in my Slack. All right, we're gonna kick it over to Andy Lang because we've got some prop bets to discuss. And there he is, the prop prince here on Bet On It for, well, the last Bet On It show for the football season. Andy Lang, we made it. We have had a very profitable one. I had a uh, really nice prop bet I wanted to ask you about. And then before we went on, Andy goes, yeah, Kel, that's my 4%. And I'm like, aha, that must have been where I got that one from. I uh, didn't think of that one myself, but I, I think I did in, in a roundabout way discussing the game and, and how I thought the game plan would go. But I digress. Andy Lang, we have a few interesting prop bets you want to go over, and then I have a few questions for you. Yeah, the bet that you're referring to, I, I actually te uh, texted you. It's in our text thread. Like you asked, I texted it to you, and then you were like, hey, check out this bet that I love. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, I said that to you Tuesday. Uh, so nice job, Kelly. Uh, great handicapping. Got to give you credit. Well done on that one. At least you didn't text me like the reasoning. You know, at least you weren't like, hey, check out these stats. I was like, yes, you copy and pasted mine. Oh, well. Oh, Andy, listen, in, in my defense, I just did a uh, Super Bowl preview with my good friend, CT Bats. We went over a couple of prop bets, and I brought it up to him because I thought, like, hey, this is how I see the game plan of the game going. So I'm just glad we agree. We'll leave it at that. Agree agree to agree, and let's cash that 4% over at wagertalk.com. Andy, first one up, longest punt? Yeah, let's go with Mitch Wisnowski on his longest punt. Uh, go ahead and try and pronounce that word three times in a row or try and do it after a, a night of adult beverages. So the number is 55 and a half, and he's gone over this in 14 games. Now, he's not going over 
by a lot, but he has had a 56 yard punt against Detroit. He had a 57 yard punt against Green Bay. So he's gone over in both of the playoff games and he's got several games with a 60 plus yard punt. He had a 61 yarder against the Rams. He had a 60 yarder against the Buccaneers, 62 against Cincinnati and Minnesota, 60 against Cleveland and a 67 yard punt in week two against the Rams. So he's got a leg on him. Uh, if the 49ers drive kind of sputters inside their own territory, he can l- absolutely launch one. So I think this 55 and a half is a bit low. I'll take the over. All right, let's talk about game plan because I do think um, when you're looking for prop bets, which our friends at the Superbook put out 42 pages of. Um, so I, I kind of thought, okay, this is how I see the game plan going. I don't think there's a ton of value on the side or total personally. So I plan on getting involved in a lot of prop bets. But you like the Kansas City Chiefs to score last. Why is that? Well, this is a play basically based on how good the Kansas City Chiefs defense has been in the playoffs in the second half. They've allowed 10 points <laughs> combined in the three games. So they make an incredible halftime adjustment. So if you're going on the premise that the Chiefs are going to have another good second half defensively, and why wouldn't they? They've had really good defensive games against uh, the Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins, and uh, in their last game, they, you know, against the Ravens, it, it could have been better. Um, I don't know. I'm just looking at this Kansas City Chiefs team. I've been a believer in their defense from the very beginning of the season. I loved their unders. I love playing the other team's team total under. So uh, any anything that I can do to support this Kansas City Chiefs defense, uh, I'm all aboard. So it's a really, really good price. If they hold firm and play great defense again, I think there's a chance there's only a couple scores in the second half. So the odds are with us that the Chiefs are going to be one of them. So one thing the Ravens didn't do, and I hope that the Niners do, is run the football. Andy, uh, your last prop bet has to do with rushing attempts. Yeah, let's take a look at 49ers. Over or under four and a half players with a rush attempt. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on the over. This play hit last week. So when we're looking at the 49ers, uh, you've obviously got Christian McCaffrey. We know he's going to get there. Brock Purdy has been running the ball, and any kneel downs count, so you you know Brock Purdy is going to get there. Um, Elijah Mitchell came in and had a few carries when uh, Christian McCaffrey was banged up or just needed a breather. So I got to believe he's going to get at least one. Kyle Juszczyk got a carry. They normally try and figure out a play or two to get him involved, whether it's passing or whether it's receiving. And then Debo Samuel is healthy. He had a couple of rush attempts. They had five players get a rush attempt last week. So I think there's some value on this one. It's even money. So all five of those guys get a rush attempt, and we'll cash this one. I like this play a lot. All right, three prop bets from Andy Lang. Andy, what do you have over at Wager Talk besides your 4% best bet for the Super Bowl? Well, it's our annual Super Bowl to Super Bowl special. If you lock it in now, you get all plays starting today all the way through next year's Super Bowl. And Kelly, why not? We were plus 91 units in 2023. We're already profitable in 2024. It includes all sports. It includes all percentages, all of our props, every play. And it's almost half price. Uh, this is normally a $2,000 play. It's all the way down to 1,200. So you're getting a fantastic value to lock in all sports. We've had a long-term success of profits. Why not? There's no better time. We do not run these specials very often, but you've got to take advantage of the annual Super Bowl to Super Bowl special. If you want to help build those bankrolls, we can be there assisting you with all these plays. So check it out over at my page, Andy Lang at wagertalk.com. Andy Lang has been killing the prop market, the UFC market, as well as the golf bets. Thank you to Andy. You guys can follow him on X at Bump Sports and Andy Lang bets over on Instagram. He gives out a ton of free content on social media as well. All right, let's kick it back to Joe and Teddy for some of those Super Bowl best bets. Quick handicap for my best bet for the show because, well, Ralph Michaels did all the hard work for me. Shortest TD under one and a half yards. Do not lay more than minus 145. I just laid minus 140, so definitely shop around on this one, guys. Last four years, it has hit nine of the last 15. Again, go over to Ralph's page 
uh, wt.buzz backslash rm and you can see all of the data on these Super Bowl props but looking for a, we'll call it a tush push if you will on the goal line or maybe a, a flag to put it right there for us easy Teddy I love your best bet uh, it is a prop bet as well let's hope it's not gotten too public though yeah, I, to be honest, I don't know anyone that likes the other side of this, so that does concern me. That being said, and to be honest, it's a low possession game, as we talked about earlier, so I'm not expecting to play many overs. But Brock Purdy rushing yards over stands out to me. So I'll find 12 and a half out there right now. And let's not forget, these lines are based on full season stats. But the props are going to win based on current form. I went back and looked at Purdy at Iowa State. All right, can this guy move around? And, of course, the college stats include sacks. <laughs> Final season with the Cyclones, he had 26 or more rushing yards in seven of his last nine games. And the big games, Kansas State, Texas, the bowl game, he had 10 or more carries in all of those. So you look at his regular season numbers, you don't see a whole lot of rushing. Yeah, there were a couple. He had a game against Tampa, Pittsburgh, Cincy, Minnesota, all playoff caliber teams where he rushed uh, to go over this number. But it's also worth noting, we know this number in both previous playoff games this season. Despite a kneel down against Green Bay, and you do have to worry about kneel downs. We talk about a player prop over with rushing yards. Last year in the playoffs, his single highest rushing total of the season came in the postseason. He's letting it all hang out. The Chiefs obviously struggling to defend rushing quarterbacks. I know Lamar Jackson went under last week. He still got plenty of yards, as did Josh Allen, as did Tua in the first playoff game. Purdy over 12 and a half yards. Rushing makes a ton of sense. To this better. Yeah, especially Chiefs defense that has been giving up over 113 and a half rushing yards over the last five games. Kind of just like those correlated props here for this one. Mm. Joe Ranieri. I, I don't know where you're going with this one, but I can't wait to hear the analysis. I, I, listen, you got you guys now, I feel if it ain't broke, uh, we're not fixing it. So with that mindset, um, you know, looking at Travis Kelsey, anytime touchdowns, first touchdown of the game. Uh, guys, it ain't broke. Don't fix it with those two. The biggest guy, the biggest players on the biggest moments show up. I don't know how many more times we got to watch Mahomes and Kelsey get it done. Very reminiscent of a la Brady and Gronk uh, for all those years. Well, we ain't getting rid of uh, you know who there, Miss Swift or uh, Travis Kelsey anytime soon. There will be a number of uh, shots on the television after he scores a touchdown of her celebrating in the box, I am absolutely sure. But I still think uh, both offenses will have success early in this game. I think the adjustments will be made. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Give me points in the first half, and I will be absolutely looking to jump in on an under in that second half when it's all said and done here and uh, not expecting a whole lot of craziness in the second half. I think a lot of fun will be had uh, point-wise only in the first half. Joe, 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 I wanted to get through an entire show without having to hear her name. <sighs> Sorry. Anyway, we made it. This is the last bet on the episode. I don't have to talk about Taylor Swift for like seven months after next Sunday. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for hanging out with us all football season. We adore you. Cheers to Teddy for filling in for Marco. He sends his love, and I will ask him if he will please put out a video for his best bet for the show for the Super Bowl. As you can see, there's our wonderful graphics team one last time. Again, thank you from myself. Teddy Covers, Joe Ranieri, Marco D'Angelo, Yanni Corrales, a.k.a. VR, and Ralph and Andy, and uh, let's see, Las Vegas Chris, who filled in for us there a little bit during the season. You guys, it has been a real treat. I hope you make a ton of money on the Super Bowl, and we cannot wait to see you next football season.